My phone rings. The library is relatively empty today, just a few patrons. Bella, my best friend, is practicing her stand-up comedy routine for our resident septuagenarian, Mr. Devi. I step away from the front desk to the back to take this call. We received a cease and desist letter from Strive Developers. It says Oasis Garden does not have the right to its land. Strive Developers wants its lot back now, Mrs. Potter says, her voice rising. What? I sink into a chair. Twenty-five years ago, this lot was an abandoned eyesore full of rats and weeds and broken glass. Mrs. Potter crawled through the opening in the rusted wire fence and slowly turned it into a space full of green trees and yellow flowers. It's been five years since Mrs. Potter asked me to be her co-director, and I've spent all my extra time working with her to create the community it is now. My body is shaking. They can't do that, I say. My stomach feels queasy. Mrs. Potter reads me the letter. We have to stop our activities in the garden. We're not going to do that, I say. It's our land now. We own it. Via adverse possession. I try to sound reassuring. But I can't stop shaking. I'll call my friends, I say. Tessa is a lawyer. She'll know what our legal rights are. Don't worry. I'll see if they can all meet tonight. They can't take the garden away. I hang up the phone and stare at the poster on the bulletin board across from me, which invites families to come to the Oasis Garden to plant vegetables. Bella comes around the bend. I just realized I lost my earring. What's wrong? You look ill. Strive developers sent us a cease and desist letter. They want Oasis Garden back. Well, they can't have it. Bella hugs me and I hold on to her. I pull away and text the rest of my friends that we need to hold a Save the Garden meeting after work at our local bookshop cafe, Banter and Books. My hands are still quivering. You sit here, Bella says. I'll man the desk. Get it together, Lily. You pride yourself on being a master at compartmentalizing. Here's your chance to prove it. A lawyer is definitely advising them. They've achieved 501c3 status and even have a board. And there's the lawyer. Tessa Joukowsky, Esquire. My matchmaker friend, Mr. Devi, is the treasurer. He worked as an accountant for 50 years. A romantic accountant. Not a bad source for a recommendation. I glance at the list of names and then look closer. Lily Burton. The librarian last night was named Lily. Couldn't be the same one. And then a Mrs. Potter and an Iris Murphy round out the board. I unpack my bag and take out my hardback of He Had No Idea. I still want my own copy. I call up Banter and Books. Hi, yesterday the saleswoman mentioned that you might get more copies of He Had No Idea in stock today. Did you happen to receive any? The woman at the other end replies that they did. I ask her to hold one copy for me and ask if they can deliver another copy to Lily at the New York Public Library branch nearby. We don't usually do that, but since I know Lily, I'm happy to do it. Do you want to include a note? She knows Lily. My face flushes. I don't want to seem like some weird stalker guy. I give a short note to include. Don't forget that we have a book talk on He Had No Idea on Friday at 7 p.m. They're lots of fun. Lily is heading it. I note it on my calendar. I am free, and it would be good for me to get out more. And find people who also like Wilhelmina Chrissy. An entire crew of book buddies. <sighs> I should have gotten her last name. I Google Lily at St. Agnes, but there are no photos of the librarians. I pull up the website of the Oasis Community Garden. No pictures of their board members either. But she is in a photo on the site, reading to a group of pre-K kids out in the sun, the caption explaining the garden's partnership with the library. This is ridiculous. I need to focus on making sure Rowena and I become the next CEOs, and instead I'm Googling some woman I met last night who wasn't even interested. <laughs>